Yeah, I, I don't know how many we're going to get. It's funny when I threw an open call for people to discuss Ticketgate, like I had 40 or 50 people. When I had people that just want to talk about the new album, I've only had a dozen people, uh, you know, that maybe expressed an interest. So we might be a small crowd, but we are a mighty crowd. Heck yeah. Yeah. So good deal. Uh, we'll give it a few more minutes. Um, while we're waiting, um, why don't we, Mark, go ahead to introduce yourself to Chris and Christine, and then we'll go around the table. Sure. Hi, I'm Mark Tonoff. I live in New Jersey, and uh, I've been around, <laughs> I've been around a long time. I saw my first Bruce Springsteen concert in 1974 at the Main Point Coffee House in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, right near Philadelphia. And uh, since then, uh, I've been to over 100 Bruce Springsteen concerts. And to my knowledge, myself and two friends of mine were the first people to ever create and sell Bruce Springsteen concerts outside of his concerts in Philadelphia and New Jersey. That is wow. one, of your, yeah, one of your claims for fame. Yes. Um, yeah. And what I love is everyone has been on the podcast. Christine, why don't you tell us a little about yourself? Um, well, as Jesse knows, I'm kind of an old person coming to life as a new Springsteen fan. I have only been to one concert that was 1985. And just got caught up in life, didn't really pay any attention to Bruce until um, Springsteen on Broadway. I watched the Netflix version of Springsteen and Broadway and just was entranced by the talent that I had missed over the years. So I am just kind of like a new fan. <laughs> That's right. Where are you? Uh, and you're uh, you are going. You have two tickets for two shows this coming tour, don't you, Christine? Yes, I'm going to Tampa, where my son lives, and then I'm going to go to Paris, France. Don't know kind of how that happened. I connected somehow with a spring nut from Australia, who who got me a ticket to Paris. We still keep in touch. Uh, it's just weird how, how things kind of happen. That is great. And Chris, you're getting settled. So yeah, I was just, I was, I was outside. I was outside, but there's uh, I think too much noise going on out there. So okay. Come back inside. Um, right. um, Chris from originally from the UK, but I've been in South Africa for the last 32 years. Um, been a Bruce Springsteen fan for 35 years and um, had to wait 27 years before I saw him in concert um, when he visited South Africa in uh, 2014. Absolutely. Yeah, so we've got New Jersey, Kentucky, Texas, uh, South Africa. So <laughs> that's that's awesome. Well, hopefully more people will join us. But in the meantime, let's not wait. Uh, Christine, let's start with you. What did you think of the new album? Well, of course, I loved it. I remember all those songs. Well, most of them from, um, you know, growing up in the 60s and we had AM radio. So, you know, just hearing the music just brings back so many memories. And of course, I got the album. I've only listened to it once, though, already. But yeah, I really enjoyed the tunes. I, I actually hope he makes another one. There's so many of the, in my opinion, everything that I say, people, is just my opinion. I really don't know anything. That's it's okay. just what you like or what you don't like. Absolutely. But whenever I hear any kind of a song that will bring back a memory, or even if I don't remember that particular song, it brings back the error of when the music happened. Yeah. So, but I think one of my favorites was um, Only the Strong Survive and What Becomes of the Broken Hearted. Oh, very nice. Chris, how about you? Thoughts? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I was, I was, 
I suppose we, I didn't really know what to expect um, you know, until we heard the first single. Um, but I like the way he sort of kept true to the original arrangements as mm-hmm. much as he hasn't tried to make a like, rock version of soul songs. Um, you know, he, he, he sort of kept them pretty close to what they were originally by the ones that I know anyway. Yeah. Um, and I think the... Yeah, you know, I think I think the sort of the biggest thing to take from it, you know is his voice. It's just it's getting better um, with every year. You know, I, I remarked on Twitter several times after Better to You came out. I don't think he's ever sounded so good. The voice has never been. I don't know if he's he's taking voice lessons or you know or, or what it is. But he, you know, it's it's incredible. He's he's not he's not resting on his laurels. He's not just you know prepare to become a legacy act he's just you know he's, he's working as hard as ever um to put out you know a polished professional um product um, very nice yeah i you know it, like i like i think i like all the songs on it i've, I've played it most of yesterday morning i think from about half past five in the morning till about midday i just had it on repeat um and yeah, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be. It, it doesn't because they're not his songs. That they don't have the depth of lyrics. That you know his his songs. I don't, I don't think it's one of these albums where I'm going to be listening to it, sort of picking up, um, you know, bits in the lyrics as as it goes along. That like Western Stars, I you know that I listened to literally for weeks and weeks, just nonstop. Um, because it was, you know, totally new and totally sort of original um, for him. I don't think I'm going to get do with this, but still, you know, he's done. I don't think any other rock star could pull this off, they, you know, and make it sound authentic. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd say, you know, I don't think we could have expected anything better from him. Okay. Um, Does anybody think that he really sounded um, confident? He seemed so confident when he was singing. I I think that's a really good point. We're going to go back to that. I want to get Mark's initial thoughts, and then that's the next question we'll talk, Christine. That's a perfect question. Yes. Sure. Uh, I... I love the new album. I, um, you know, he released some videos before uh, before the album came out, and the production on the videos is tremendous. Uh, you know, with the dancers and the horns and the band, um, expl- you know, like explosive energy. And um, you know, I'm not one to criticize. I just look at. Um, uh, I have uh, the utmost respect for Bruce at this point in his career, at age seventy-three, to take on, to take on doing something totally new. Not in a sense, it really isn't because he always has had uh, soul roots in a lot of his music. And you know, as as I said, going back to nineteen seventy-four, you would play songs like the Detroit Medley and Wilson Pickett, and he. So he's always been. You know, I think that, you know, we he's said in interviews and recently that, you know, that he does have soul roots. And, um, you know, I, uh, you know, I think his voice is great. And I hope that he does some shows um, (laughs) to to promote the album. I would love to see that uh, in a smaller venue. And um, for me, it's... uh, it's all good, and he's excited about it. And what more can you ask for? That's the way that I look at it. I think very well said. What, Mark? Go ahead and answer Christine's question. Do you think he sounds confident, like almost this, not an arrogance, but just a hey, I'm owning these songs? Yes. In fact, I listened to the interview that he did with Howard Stern, 
And he did say that um, when he started listening to the songs after he recorded them, that he said, you know, he, he thought, oh, I sound, you know, I actually sound really good. So uh, I think he's very confident. Yes, very confident, and I he would not have released this, you know, because he I, I heard in his interview with Howard Stern, I there was another interview I'm trying to recall who it was, but he said that he did record another album and of soul covers, and he didn't like it, and I guess you may have heard he said he threw it out. Yeah, in the actual introduction to the first video, you know, when he's sitting like in the car, he goes, because that's how we roll. Right? Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do that. How about you, Chris? Yeah, I, you know, I think as I said, his, his voice, he, he sounds totally ease singing these songs. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's, I think, you know, because he's maintaining the original sound and arrangement, you know, I think he's sort of res respecting the original artist, but then at the same time putting his own his own stamp on it. Um, uh, um, you know, some of them I think work better than others. I think is it the first song on the album where it starts off with like a spoken passage? Yes. I don't think yeah, you know, I don't think that works as well as the the singing. Um, okay. But you know, Black Night Shift is just you know that's just sublime. That is just yeah, brilliant. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's as good as the ori original. Um, yeah. It's like he really nails that one, and, and a lot of us, you know, like it's, it's only been a day and a half, so I haven't. Really, you know, um, apart from the couple of songs I know, I haven't really become accustomed with the whole album yet. But I'm sure you know, the more I play it, the, the more I'm going to sort of notice um, things. No, another thing I wanted to say is, <clears throat> um, <coughs> like I was at work, I stream music through my phone. I'm, I work in a photographic shop. Um, so not, only, not only am I the manager, I'm the DJ there. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, main, mainly Bruce Springsteen. Uh, sure. <laughs> um, but I, I was playing when when the single came out, the night shift. I was I was playing that one day, and um, this young um, black woman, you know, maybe she's about nineteen, twenty years old, customer in the shop. Um, she was singing along because obviously she knows the original song. She probably. Yeah, wouldn't know what Bruce Springsteen was if he came and you know slapped her on the face. Um, but you know, it just shows sort of the sort of unifying power of music. Um, you know how it how it breaks down <clears throat> breaks down barriers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm trying to think of what 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 the what the word is. Um, but, you know, it's, it's like a unifying, it's like a unifying thing. You know, you, you don't you listen to the music, not you're not worried who's singing it. So, and you know, even my co yeah. colleagues, they 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 don't love. Well, they do know Bruce Springsteen. I'm play, um, playing <clears throat> playing him half the day, but um, you know, they they're singing along to these songs because they know some of them too. So, it's sort Christine of a crossover, I guess. Yeah. So, Christine, I'm going to start with you and then I'll go around the table. Um, I was looking today online and there's a little bit of there's some pushback among some fans that say, oh, what's next? Vegas. Oh, why is he doing this? Uh, this is a waste of our time. You know, uh, Karen Rose uh actually in her thing said that he surrounded himself with yes men and that someone should tell him no bruce this is a bad idea so i'll have to give my opinion then i'm going to ask you guys my opinion is the guy's 73 he has given us hours of music he has given us net you know we have had uh, the netflix special as you talked about christine you know the world he has given us literally you know decades of joy and 
and love and music. And if he wants to do something, go for it, Bruce. And if you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. If you, you know, I have been on record. I did not care for the Seeger sessions. It just didn't click me. Now, mm-hmm. when I saw it live on the the one in Dublin, I went, oh, wow, I wish I had gone to that show. That show looked pretty good. So, and I'm going to quote Nebraska, there's just a meanness in this world. So, yeah. Christine, any thoughts about that? And then I'll get Mark and Chris's thoughts, too. You know, the I've read just a few not horrible, horrible, mean things, but I picked up a tone as well on some people they kind of thought it was mediocre but sometimes I do think maybe it's that generation gap kind of thing maybe a lot of the younger fans weren't around in the 60s or 70s to hear the Marvin Gaye you know the the temptations you know I just because it brought back memories to me and I just loved it I mean we always had a radio or a stereo on didn't even matter when we were young what it was we just liked music and again I think what brought it home to me was just the fact he just he sounded so happy and confident like I love western stars as well but I think even in western stars that was their that was their little pullback of is this gonna work like will this tune work with a country tone but with these songs because it's probably what he grew up with as well yeah. I just felt that happiness in him, like, hey, I'm going to sing this song because I like it. It made me, or, you know, speaking on his behalf, which, of course, I don't know the man. I've never met him. Yeah. But I, I just kind of felt like he was going to do, like you said, Jesse, hey, I'm going to sing these songs. If you don't like them, you don't have to listen to them. Yeah. But I liked them. Yeah, I, I am right there. And I, you know, the USA Today review, I thought was the best. They said we may not have needed this album, but it sure is fun to have. And it is. And and with all that's going on around the world politically and the strives, it's just kind of nice to throw in an album that just makes me smile. This morning I was playing it while I was taking my shower. And I was embarrassingly at 63.0 dancing in front of the you know, mirror, just having fun. Chris, how about you? What's the <laughs> thoughts on the the little bit of negativity that we're seeing? Well, you know, I, I remember when um, Western Stars came out as well, people were saying, oh, well, this isn't real. Bruce. But he's never, he's never really... Apart from maybe after since born in the USA, I'd say he's never sort of pulled out what you were expecting. It's always been a surprise. Um, I think one of the surprises is that he's, he's carried on going. You know, I, I, mean, I mentioned on your show before when I first started listening to him, he was eighty-seven, so he was like thirty-eight years old. Yeah. Um, you think, well, that's you know, pop stars in those days. You think, well, that's it. You know, I've, I've just got him at the end, and you know. Tunnel of Love's probably his last album. But Tunnel of Love was totally different to Born in the USA um, than the other band albums, which were sort of different. Um, and then Ghost of Tom Jones again was like totally a total departure. Um, and then what, um, The Rising was just, you know, again, it was just, mm-hmm. it was unexpected, you know, it was, it was spectacular. It, you know, it, it was like a shock, but a you know a good shock. You just just weren't expecting something so good. I don't think. Um, then, then what did we? Then um, Devils and Dust, which I still you know that's one album I just can't get into after about the fourth song. I, you know, I just lose interest in that. <clears throat> um, the Magic again was just you know a, a, exactly outstanding. But again, he, he, 
he he's gone for a more tighter, almost indie style sound mm-hmm. with with that. Um, and what, oh, there was yeah. Um, then the Seeger session was a total different departure again. You know, not everybody's cup of tea. I, I liked it though. And then what did we have? Um, so I'm going to stop it, you, you know, just for a minute. On, it's, it's... Yeah. No, I I oh. had a guy yesterday. Um, I was on a different Zoom call. And um, Matt Donnelly, who is the co-host of Penn, uh, Penn's Sunday School. You know, he writes for Penn and Teller. And he said, I wonder what? if he put out Wrecking Ball and was expecting it to really do well because he had things to say and it kind of didn't. And, you know, he says, I wonder if he went, you know, F it. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Right. Yeah. And so I, I don't know. Mark, your thoughts on a little bit of the disappointment from fans. And I am not judging them. If they don't like the album, that's great. But right. I get a, just a little sense of meanness in there. What What's your thoughts, Mark? Sure. Um, I was listening to uh, the Springsteen channel on Sirius XM yesterday. Yeah. And uh, it was great because they were they would play the original version of the songs and then they would play Bruce's version of it. And, um, you know, I think that it's all good because these are songs that people who are older, probably familiar. I, there were actually a couple I wasn't familiar with. And um, it, and then for the younger people who didn't know these songs, they're being introduced to them for the first time. And uh, this pushback, um, you know, I haven't been always positive about Bruce. I've gotten uh, annoyed about certain things like, you know, the whole ticket fiasco that went on. But, um, you know, I, if you're a critic, I understand that's your job. You're supposed to, I guess, either you're supposed to criticize, I guess. But the way I look at it is, as a fan, um, it doesn't bother me. Uh, that, and it's just a piece of art. He released it. He did it. And uh, I think it's something to enjoy. And Bruce made a decision at this point in time to not be political, to not um do something that is original um i don't know i just Mm -hmm. think that i I don't i don't want i'm not really going to uh get involved in the criticism Uh, you know as you were saying jesse you either like it you don't like it that's fine but i think we live in a um you know it's part of the culture where we have to look (laughs) <laughs> the way I look at it is, who else, and I think uh, Chris was saying this, who else at 73 could have done this? Yeah. You know, who, who's going to be doing this? Who has the guts? <laughs> who has the guts to put out this album? And he probably knew going in that there would be, you know, the pushback. And he really doesn't care. So I respect that, that he was willing to still do it. You know, because he, he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. Yeah. Go ahead, Christine. Well, it's it's just a thought that just hit me. It's like, doesn't he deserve this? Like, he he's paid his dues all through the... I mean, we're talking about an artist that started, what, in the 60s? Yeah. Um, whoever said he was, like, 73. Yeah. He paid his dues. Nobody handed him anything. You know, he yeah. worked for it and plus he's really been true to himself his whole career yeah so i guess because i'm older now and you just get this thought like i've kind of earned this and i really feel like he wanted to sing these songs yeah and he did it yeah i agree i i totally and i've been that um that from that perspective that as an artist um like i'll switch hand 
uh, Brian Wilson's latest CD was him just playing his hits on the piano. He didn't sing at all. There was no orchestra, just him on his piano. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful CD. But I was mm -hmm. like, I, I don't care if it was a beautiful CD. Brian Wilson has given the world enough music that if he wants right. to do a CD of that, go for it, Brian. Yeah. Uh, so exactly. Um, so Mark, if there's a volume two, which it sounds like there's going to be, is that something you're interested in? Of course. Um, <laughs> that yeah, is the easiest much. question I'm going to ask today. <laughs> Of course, it's 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 you know going to be more most likely covering soul songs, and um, I, of course I'm going to be interested. I think that you know, like Bruce um, heard him heard an interview yesterday, and he was talking about um, what I can't for maybe it was Born the Run or one of the albums where he recorded. 70 songs for the album mm -hmm. or maybe it was born in the USA but uh but you know he just he he thought you know I'm sure you know like he said he threw out the first album that he made that he made for the soul covers yeah. he probably has 50 songs or more that he's already recorded for the next album yeah um I agree you know yeah. so yes I'm interested uh I like I grew up with this music. I grew up <laughs> buying, going to the record store every week in Philadelphia, in my neighborhood, buying the 45 records of the Four Tops, of the Supremes, mm -hmm. of the Temptations, yeah. um, and buying all these records. So it's just so many wonderful memories. And uh, as Christine was saying, I like, I think his voice fits very well with these songs at this point in his life. Yeah, I agree. I um Chris, how about you? I see you're you're on the move. Yeah, no, it's just my, my daughter and her friends were just playing out in the park. So I'm just yeah. we've got a we've got a park behind the house. I'm just locking the gate. Okay. <laughs> um, um yeah I, you know Tak I'd I'd compare Tak if I yeah if I was a famous rock star. Um, yeah. I'd probably want to do a you know, an album. I think you always go back to the, the songs you know in your teens or pre-teens. Um, you know, probably sort of between like twelve and seventeen. Probably is that the yeah uh, those songs. Those are the songs that really hit you first. Um, and you, I think you're always going to go back to them. You're always going to get that feeling. Um, you know, so I'd, you know, if I, if in my case, it would be the early to mid '80s. So you know, if, if yeah. I was, I want to, I want to do like songs by Duran Duran or <laughs> Dixie's Midnight Runners or something like that. <laughs> um, but you know, so I can, you know, I can fully understand him wanting to sing because those are the songs that have sort of formed his um, love of music, and which is, yeah, you know, the sort of the catalyst for what for the Bruce Springsteen we have now. So I, to follow along that, you know, I was, I was born in 59, uh, growing up, growing up, my parents listened to nothing but fifties rock and roll, my mom and country music. So, you know, you give me an album of Bruce singing Hank Williams, Johnny Cash, Roll Haggard, you know, I'm there, you know, I, you know, uh, I loved him doing Rhinestone Cowboy. I would have preferred uh a different Glenn Campbell song just because I just love Glenn Campbell. So yeah, I'm in, I think this would be, um, it, it, from my perspective, it's a different muscle for him. It's a different way for him to express his creativity. Um, it's a good way to kind of clear the palate. And, um, Terry Smith and I talked yesterday and it's, uh, we said, how cool would it be if on the next tour he did Western Stars, Letter to You, Songs from This, and only did like five or six traditional E Street albums, you know, E Street songs yeah. like it, it would. Wow, that would be crazy. And like Terry said, I would want to be at that show because I would want to know 
what is he going to play? What is he going to do? Um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think that my hope is that he will use a few of these songs as his encore songs, kind of a like, you know, we can do the Detroit medley. He can do twist and shout. He can do some of these songs as a, you know, closer or two or three uh, would be great. But uh, I love the idea that he's, he's having fun and doing other things. Um, Christine, any specific songs that were highlights for you? Um, I just, for some reason, it was what becomes of the broken hearted. And I don't know why. I just, I, I too was listening on to the E Street uh, Sirius XM show. I think yeah. one of the other members mentioned that. And it was like, maybe I haven't heard that song for a while, like the original version. But when I heard it on the radio, that was one of the first things I went to the YouTube channel to see if, you know, he'd made a video about it. But I could still hear the song. And of course, I downloaded the album to my phone. But I don't know, it just... Like I said, it just struck a chord, and it was just awesome that I could hear Springsteen sing it. Like, who in their right mind back in the Born uh, in the USA era, the Born to Run era, would think you would hear Bruce sing in a song like that? Yeah. Um... But again, it was beautiful. The music and I think this is what really got me on Western Stars was, of course, I loved all the songs, but, you know, just the different kind of music, not that loud drum, not the loud, you know, the guitar, the electric guitar kind of stuff like that. But the music in this plus the song itself, I don't know, it was just really kind of a magical for me and again I've mentioned this before Jesse and I, I don't want to just keep repeating myself but you know maybe there is just like that generation gap going on yeah, yeah it could be you know um, I thought one of my favorites was I wish it was rain wish it would rain yeah and Terry mm -hmm. Smith brought up he goes that's actually closest to a Bruce song you know, like, uh, so how about you, Mark? Things that stand out to you? Yeah, I haven't heard. I don't think I've heard every song yet, but okay, I'm looking at the list here. Um, Night Shift, um, you know, watch the video. Tremendous. Uh, very heartfelt. Uh, you know, you're, you're just talking about um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Marvin Gaye. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and who else? Uh, Jackie. He mentioned right, Zachary right, Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. Jackie then, Wilson. Right. And then um uh Soul Days, the Debbie the Debbie Gray song. Uh mm -hmm. I'll tell you the truth. I don't even think I was that I probably heard that years ago, but I don't think I remembered that song. And then you No, had, I didn't either. Then uh Turn Back the Hands of Time, uh, the video. Um I I know that song. I didn't really remember it. Uh yeah just just great and um you know then there are some songs i haven't heard yet which i'm gonna listen to mm -hmm. that I'm, i i don't think i'm familiar with i forgot to be your lover i don't know if you uh you all remember that but i don't um so yeah. yeah i don't need that i i don't know that song <laughs> so well, like i didn't know mr union man and and Western Union man and I was like, boy, there are so many things that are now out of time, right? I can you even send uh -huh. a telegram anymore? I, I don't know if you can. Uh, I yeah, um, you know, and so yeah, that it is. Um, yeah. There's just a really cool collection of things that you know. Uh, you know, you you end with the Supreme someday we'll be together, you know, which is an iconic song. But he mm -hmm. did pick other nice songs. Chris, how about you? Um yeah, but, you know, the, the, the ones that stand out um so far, you know, like I said, it's only a day and a half, so it's difficult to sure. But uh, night shift, as I said, um, Do I Love You, I think that's 
you know, I, I like that the first bit. I heard it. Um, uh, the yeah, the, 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 the one is, I wish it wish it would rain. Yeah, and then there's um, also that Western Union man, which I thought I thought that one also was maybe sort of pretty close to a as close to a Springsteen song as you'd as you'd get. Yeah. Uh, another thing I wanted to thing is, <clears throat> you know, I don't know how many of these original artists are still alive, but I'm sure the ones that are, this is going to do wonders for their um, royalties and, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you know po- popularity. Um, I remember, you know, when Western Stars came up, you know, the last started probably mainly to you, Jesse, but um, you know, comparing it to people like Glenn Campbell and um, other people, now so I sort of did a dive and started yeah. listening to to that stuff. So that you know, that's also it introduces you. Some of these songs are like sort of pretty obscure. So yeah. um, I'm sure I'm going to be doing a dive and hunting out the originals. And um, you know, like you can these days, you can listen to anything anytime. So there's and, no reason not to. And I do think that's. I, I have not done a lot of that. I, I wish I had caught that E Street. I will do it myself now, as you were talking, Christine and Mark, that, you know, play the original, then play, you know, his version and compare them. I think it's kind of cool that he didn't um, do a lot of changing it. He just was right. a pretty close homage. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think that's that should be fun i think when the e street band gets them and and i have seen uh i just was looking to make sure no one was looking for a link that he was there was an an italian interview where and he said that one of there was a jimmy webb song he recorded that didn't make it and he's planning for the e street band to play some of these on tour so i haven't got to hear the whole interview yet but that was one of the highlights i'm like oh good to hear uh so you know, I think this is fun. I'm looking forward to the second um, volume. Uh, you know, I'm sure that won't happen anytime soon. It could be a year, two years, whatever. But I, I think it's fun. I also don't think, I think he still has original music in him. He, you know, when he was on Howard Stern, oh, he yeah. mentioned that he asked, it, it, it comes to him. He gets an idea and that starts. Mm-hmm. So I do think that he will find other voices and other things to share. Uh, but for now, he's, you know, sharing this love of music that he has. Um, any other thoughts? Yeah, Anyone, Mark? Uh, I, um, I was just looking at the uh, track listing again. And I don't think uh, maybe you can correct me, Jesse. I don't think Bruce has ever performed any of these songs uh, in concert with the E Street Band. I do not think so either. Right, and I was. Uh, you're 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 probably familiar. I don't know if Chris or Christine are, but uh, back in the '70s, I don't know um, if he's done it since. But he used to do "Higher and Higher" by Jackie Wilson. Have you heard that? Yes. Uh, I have not. I have to try to find that. Well, I'm sure find. it's available on YouTube. Yeah, it's it's yeah, good. He did that. Uh, there's a famous concert he did in Boston. I think it's the Boston Music Hall in 76 or something. And he does higher and higher with a horn section. And it's interesting to me that he didn't include that on the album, you know, that he's doing songs because that's he can knock that song out of the park. That, yeah. is, that song is a perfect fit for Bruce. You know, Mark, it's interesting, right, is that um, during the Wrecking Ball tour, they had that melody, right, where they did, um, you know, he talked about soul music, and you had to play that. And he did kind of a Motown melody, medley. He didn't include those either. It's almost like he said, okay, I don't want to do devil in a blue dress. I don't want to do these. I want a whole new section right. to share. Um, and then who knows, maybe in other versions, because I agree with you. I'd love to hear an official version of higher and higher. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be great. How about you, Christine? Any uh, thoughts before we get out of here? 
Well, the only thing I would like to say is, and I know we talked about it in your podcast, but his voice, uh, there's just something about his voice. It's kind of hard to believe with all the rock and roll that he did, you know, Mm -hmm. that his voice still sounds spectacular to me. And to my understanding, I don't think, I think he's even mentioned that he's never taken voice lessons. But for him to, even on Western Stars, the smoothness of his voice really impacted me. And then the same with this. It just, it was smooth. There's no cracks. There's no, you know, um, I don't even know what to call it. Just, it was just, um, I don't know, soft, relaxing, soothing kind of a feeling there is a smoothness to it for his age and like i said for the amount of years that he's really put his voice out there i mean he never tried to sing softly you know and again i've only been to one concert and um I don't know. That was really the thing in both the Western stars and even letter to you, but the Western stars and then this album, just the smooth sound of his voice for somebody that's been rocking for 50 years. Yeah. And one of the things that I did think he mentioned on that Howard Stern interview, and if you have not watched it, it, there are slots of it available. There are ways you could hear it. Um, you know, he talked about that that was one of his gifts, that he could control his voice. He could he could really portray loud, a rock and roll voice, and then also a smoother voice without really straining his throat. It was just he one did, of the gifts yeah. he does. And so I think that's amazing. Uh, Chris, any final thoughts? Yeah, I'm not going to, you know, the, the voice, you know, it, it, it's, it's outstanding. And, you know, if he hasn't been taking voice lessons he's just i think he's just been working on it himself um you know to me he sounds better than than ever yeah um and also it's uh you know i think we're um we're all um sort of how can i say it i don't can't see christine so i don't know how old Chris, can't judge how old she is but um, I think we're sort of over the tip of the the mountain, and it's it's an inspiration. Like I'm 52, um, and it's it's an insp- inspirational that someone who's 21 years older than me is still at his peak, doing yes. what he does as good as ever. Um, yeah, and that you know, and it's, it's sort of motivating. And think, oh, you know, just, you know, um, you know. Th- th- some people they get to fifty five and they sort of give up. Um, but you know, it, it, it's it's a inspiration to keep going and still deliver your best. Yeah, I, I well said. Whenever, as long as as long as as long as you can, um, you know. So that, I think I think that's the that that, that that that's that's you know one of the amazing things about about it. I totally agree. Well, um, thank just, you, Mark. Uh, Go ahead, I please. I just had a couple of things I just wanted sure. to say. Please. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, something that just came to mind uh, that I, that you probably know, Jesse, that over the years, Bruce has done a number of benefit concerts at the Stone Pony in Asbury Park for, I think it's Boston College. Do you know about this? Uh, please tell me more. Okay. Uh, Bruce has, uh, I think his son went to Boston College, and he would have these private events, um, you know, very expensive, like $1,000 a ticket. Uh, And he would be there, Patty, and he would have not the full E Street band, maybe members of the band, a horn section. And he would always, and most of the songs he would do it, the I never went, I never got in, but most of these shows, if you look at the set list, they were all pretty much all soul cover songs. And he would be doing a lot of duets with Patty. 
So I was just mm -hmm. remembering that. The other thing is I that we that I just want to mention, if you already don't know, that next Monday and two next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, November 14th, 15th, and 16th, Bruce is going to be the musical guest on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. And he's also, there's going to be a special Thanksgiving show with Jimmy Fallon. And I think Bruce may be hosting, I'm not sure, November 24th, Thanksgiving Eve. Wow. So November next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then Thanksgiving Eve, Bruce is going to be on with, on the Jimmy Fallon Tonight Show. Okay. Yes. Yes. I do know that. I've already got the DVR set. I'm excited <laughs> about it. Yes, very much. Good. Um, any other final thoughts before we get out of here? I really enjoy uh, your little talks about Bruce, Jesse. I don't have many people that I can really discuss it with. I'm um, I'm the fan of the family and everybody else is just kind of ho-ho about it. Well, so it's really fun to be able to talk to other real fans. That is very sweet of you to say. I loved our visiting. I love uh, you and I's fun banter back and forth on Twitter <laughs> that we do with love. If someone else was like, do they? I said, I, we love each other. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, so thank you, Christine. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Chris. This is great. I'm going to put this up tomorrow um, <clears throat> as an episode um, because I'm doing that 30 days, uh, 30 episodes in 30 days. So I'm definitely going to use this as an episode, but I think people will enjoy the talk. And you, you all three were very kind to take time out of your Saturday to uh, talk about the new album. Uh, if you end up having more thoughts or something, reach out to me and we'll do a follow-up episode with any of the three of you. So thank you. You guys are wonderful. Um, listener, please let me know what you think. Uh, we are, I'd love to hear, um, as I said on Twitter, love it, loathe it, like it. it, it it's all good. I just want to hear your thoughts on it. Um, so reach out to me, setlessingbruce at gmail.com. I am at Jesse Jackson DFW on Twitter for now, and I'm at setlessingbruce on Twitter. So let me know. All right, guys, you go. Nice the rest to meet everybody. Have a great day, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Talk Thank to you, you soon. Know. Goodbye. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. I want and need your feedback. You can reach me multiple ways to tell me what you like or don't like about the show. You can reach out to give me guest suggestions or maybe to join me on the podcast yourself. We're on Twitter at SetLustingBruce or at Jesse Jackson DFW. I have an Instagram, SetLustingBruce or Jesse Jackson DFW. Our Facebook page, facebook.com slash SetLustingBruce. Go to patreon.com slash SetLustingBruce to find out how you can support the show and we have several tiers of support please go to your favorite podcast player and hit subscribe and tell a friend about the podcast because that is the way we're going to grow if you're not tired of hearing me speak you can hear me on next stop everywhere the doctor who podcast where charles skaggs and i talk all things doctor who the how many podcast where me and my friends gary scott bob and jr talk pop culture and finally my newest podcast the last best hope for conversation a babylon 5 podcast where karen lou and i are going through the tv show babylon 5 one episode at a time i am always looking for guests so please reach out to me setlustingbruce at gmail.com You just heard the fun talking, hard rocking, music loving, album ranking, fan thinking, joy spreading, lyric reading, story sharing podcast that is the one, the only, Set Listening Bruce. The theme for Set Listening Bruce was written by David Rosen, used by permission.